Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you all for giving us the opportunity to testify in favor of HB3 and tell you about our reasons why we support it. I am a mom, and I'm also a co-founder of an organization that supports farmers around the country, especially farmers who have been targeted on the raw milk issue. It is most unfortunate that the state of Maryland continues to actively criminalize hardworking and peaceful farmers who produce a product that people want. You'll hear from the FDA about how dangerous raw milk is, and you'll probably hear about thousands of illnesses attributed to the consumption of raw milk. I and thousands of other Marylanders have a secret to share with you that delegitimizes all their scary data. We have been drinking raw milk for years, and we have not gotten sick from it. Yes, thousands of us for years, and giving it to our children and our grandparents. According to the FDA, we should all be dead, or in the hospital, or irreparably damaged. But that is simply not the reality that we are living with. And when reality conflicts with the data, it's time to take a closer look at that data. I've heard from activists who were active during the civil rights era in the 50s and 60s. They say that food choice is the defining civil rights issue of the current generation. The fear of raw milk and the criminalization of farmers who produce it are powerful examples of a paradigm that doesn't serve anyone. The current FDA accusations against raw milk on examination hold up about as well as the theory that the earth is the center of the universe, that the earth is flat, or the scientific racism that was used for so many years to justify and uphold the Jim Crow laws. It is all utterly absurd. There is as much real life basis to the raw milk prohibition as there is to the scientific racism claims that led to the Jim Crow laws of the 1800s and 1900s. And like the assertions of scientific racism, the science just does not hold up when examined, as you will hear very strongly from other testimony. Today, and thankfully so, peaceful people can sit beside each other on a bus, go to school together, and drink from the same water fountain. Peaceful people should also be able to come together in a voluntary and mutually beneficial arrangement for food and not be criminalized, punished, or threatened for that arrangement. History teaches us, as with the Jim Crow laws, that some of the most abhorrent laws came about and remained with the excuse that these laws were for our own protection. We don't want protection that threatens our peaceful farmers with legal action if they share a gallon of milk with us. For a state that likes to call itself progressive, sanctioning farmers for providing food to their communities is roughly equivalent to criminalizing the operator of a food service facility for serving the wrong person at a lunch counter. When we look back on history 30, 20, or even 10 years from now, how will Maryland be seen? Let's not allow Maryland law to be based on old science or the data from manipulated statistics to maintain unjust and unsound regulatory prohibitions against regular people doing what people have done for all of human history, producing food and sharing it with their neighbors. Thank you.